Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. 2014 question on coordinate geometry on the Leave Insert Ordinary Level course. Uh, this one is taken off a sample paper. The points A, B, and C have coordinates as follows A is 3, 5. B is minus 6, 2, C is 4, minus 4. Plot A, B and C on the diagram. OK, let's give that a, a shot. Well, every single point you plot is X, comma, Y. OK, X before Y in the alphabet, X before Y when you plot. OK, so what do I mean when I say that? Well, this point here, 3, 5, I go over 3 on my X and then up or down 5 on my y. So over 3 on my x, so this going up in 2, so that's 3 in the middle, and then up to 5 would be up to here. Okay, so over 3 and up to 5. Okay, very, very important that you label the points, otherwise you won't get most of the marks. B minus 6, 2. So x before y, so minus 6 on the x-axis brings me over to here. And then I have to go up to 2. So that's b. And then c is 4 on my x, down to minus 4 on my y. So 4 minus 4 is here. OK, so let's just have a quick check. 3, 5, 3, 5, a looks good. B minus 6, 2, that looks good. C, 4, minus 4. Yeah, that looks good. So that's part A. Uh, plot A, B, C on the diagram. OK, part B then asks you to find the equation of a line. Now this is really important because this comes up quite a bit. So to find the equation of a line. A, B. OK, well let's, let's join that line AB just so we can see it. Okay, so find the equation of AB. So to the log tables, to coordinate geometry page, which is page 18, and find the equation of the line. So the very top one is used to find the equation of a line, the bottom one when you're given an equation and you must do something with it. Okay, so to find that equation of a line, I'm going to use y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Okay, some things you need to note. m in that case is slope. They use the letter m for not midpoint, as you might think, but slope. And then x1, y1 is a point. It's a point on the line, so I can pick the point A or the point B. And then this x, y here, we don't sub in anything for it. We're creating an equation, and an equation always has uh, letters in it. So I need a slope and I need a point. Well, I have a point. I have two points. In fact, A or B, I can use either of them. I need to find slope. OK, so back I go to find the slope formula. They're all the formulas are here. So if you use this page, it makes this chapter all that more easier. So the slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. OK, well, if I'm going to find the slope of AB, I need to write down the points A, B. So A is 3, 5. B is minus 6, 2. And label them. And if you can't remember how to label them, always know that it's up here is two points that are labeled X and Y of the first point. And we call them X1, Y1. And X and Y of the second point, And we call them X2 and Y2. So let's sub them in, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. OK, pop on your calculator, hit the fraction button, you get 2 minus 5 on the top, and on the bottom, minus 6 minus 3. So for that, I am getting a slope of a third. I like that. I always look at the direction of the line. So always from left to right, you draw your line. It's going up a hill. So yes, I would expect a positive slope. OK, 
And then I take that slope and I sub it into my formula here. So we have y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Like I said, you can use any point. I tend to use whatever one I've labeled x1, y1. So I get y minus 5, 5 coming from here, is equal to a third times x minus x1, which is here. So when you've got a fraction for your slope, that 3 that's there comes up here. Okay, so that you get 3 by everything on the left. And then you leave the 1, you leave the number on top with whatever's on the right. So the 3 came up here, so it's 3 by everything on that side, and then the top number by this side. Okay, so 3 by y is 3y, 3 by 5 is 15. The bracket closes, so I'm done with multiplying by 3, equals 1 times x is x, 1 times minus 3 is minus 3. Okay, merge the numbers or plus 15 to both sides, whichever way you do it. So you're getting then 3y equals x minus 3 plus 15. 3y is equal to x plus 12. Okay, and that is the equation of the line AB. Equation of a line links all these points together on this line and all the ones that go on either side of that because the line goes on forever. Okay, find the area of the triangle ABC. Well, let's form a triangle first so we can see it. Okay, so let's find the area of that triangle. So again, back to your log tables. Let's look for the um, area of a triangle, and you will see a formula here, half x1, y2. Minus x2, y1. Okay, right. So area of a triangle, triangle has three corners, three vertices. When I look at this though, I only have two, x1, y1 x2, y2. So I've only two points. Okay, so how do I use that to find the area of a triangle? Okay, well I'll explain that in a minute. I'm not using half the base by the perpendicular height, in case any of you are familiar with that, because although I could find the base, which is just the length of the line BC, okay, I'd need what's called the perpendicular height. So the line, the height up the middle that forms a right angle with the bottom. Okay, and I don't have that and I don't know where to bring it down. So I can't use that formula. That's why it, that formula tends not to be used in coordinate geometry. And it's why it has its own formula based on points. But to use that, what you have to do is bring one of the points to zero, zero. Zero, zero being the origin, being the center point here. Now it doesn't matter which point you bring doesn't matter at all. I tend to bring the closest. These look like they're um, equal distance away. So maybe I'll bring C up here, okay? Which means I have to bring C, move uh, A and B by that amount so that I end up with a triangle. Let's try that again. So C moves up here, B moves by the same amount, A moves by the same amount. So my new triangle is there, okay? So if it's accurately drawn, it's the exact same area, it's just moved. So I've literally shoved the triangle up or translated it into new points or shifted it upwards so that one of the corners was on zero, zero. Okay, so how do I do that in maths? Well, let's take, we decided to move C, a uh, four minus four is C. Okay, I'm getting that from here. So what do I have to move it by? Well, the x-coordinate, I have to subtract 4 of it. Okay, that's how I get it to be, because remember I want to move it to 0, 0. So to move that point 4 back to 0, I subtract 4 of it. That makes sense to me, because it's sitting here at 4, so I have to move it 4 units to be here. What do I do to y? Well, I add 4 to y. 
Okay, why? Because I come here, but I have to move up four so that my end goal is there. Okay, so what do you do then? Well, you take your other two points, which we're taking to be A and B. And you move them by the same amount. So I'm subtracting 4 off X and adding 4 to Y. So my new point is 3 minus 4 is minus 1. 5 and 4 is 9. Okay, and then to B, I'm subtracting 4 off X and I'm adding 4 to Y. So that I end up getting minus 6 minus 4 to be minus 10. And 2 and 4 is 6. Okay, so this this location, minus 1, 9 is up here, so that's when A moved up. And this minus 10, 6 is over here, and 6 is up here. So you can see B ends up here. And that's because we move C that far. So that's what we're after doing. And it's these two points here, x1, y1, x2, y2, that become the new points that we put into this formula. We don't put in the 0, 0, just these new points. So that your area then becomes a half of x1 by y2. So I have minus 1 by 6 minus x2 by y1. Okay, and when the letters are written up against each other like this, they just mean multiply, which is why I have them in brackets. So I'm getting my area to be a half of, so I'm just putting minus 1 in a bracket, 6 in a bracket beside it, and then minus bracket, minus 10 in a bracket, by 9. So I'm getting half of 84, um, which will give me 42 units squared. Half of 84 is 42. Okay, so this area of a triangle is up here. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our level 7 in electronic and computer engineering? This is a three-year programme that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keeps us healthy, the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress on to the level 8 in electronics and self-driving technologies and from there to the masters. Check out the link below for more information.